Hey you, yeah you, before we get this video started, I just want to say a thank you for those who have been a member of my Patreon. If you want to be a member of my Patreon, I'll leave a link in the description down below right here. And there's a list right here of all the people who have been a member or a following member of the Patreon to help keep this channel alive. I would appreciate it if you do show, show your support guys. Uh, you guys are awesome and I really thank you for your support. Also, c commissions are open, so if you want to want a commission for me to draw something for you, go to my DeviantArt page right here as well in the link in the description, and I'll draw something for you. But make sure you hopefully follow the rules in my Patreon, on my on my Patreon and commission, so you can get so you can get it up, so we can get it on the list for you to for me to draw something for you guys. I would really appreciate it if you do, and yeah. As always, take care, and have a great day, and let's start the video, shall we? What is up YouTube, Frost the Hobbit in here, and we're back with another reaction video for all of you. This is a Patreon request. This is a Patreon request. Linkara wants me to watch Linkara on top of the fourth wall. I believe it's called Action Comics 775. On top of the fourth wall. I think this is a Superman comic. And this was requested on Patreon. And I was given I was given the request by Neville. Neville, I hope I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Or, hope I'm Nev Neville. I know I know who he is. I'm sorry, guys. It's just uh... Neville Punzel. Neville Punzel. Since his birthday is, it was for his birthday this Friday. I hope I hope he enjoys this little reaction. I hope he's enjoyed this little reaction video. I hope I'm not too late. Maybe I get this done on Friday. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe it is on Friday. You may never know. All right. This is going to be a top of the fourth wall. Issue 775. So, yeah. Happy birthday, Neville Punzel, because you wanted this on your birthday on Friday. All righty. Let's get this started, shall we? In three, two. Oh, and before we check this out, make sure to watch the video for yourself. So you want to check out Linkara. Linkara is a very popular YouTuber. He does comic book reviews, and he's very funny. Around, just like Nostalgia Critic, he's like the Nostalgia Critic of comic books. So let's get this started. In three, two, one, go, go. Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. But this Patreon-sponsored episode is sure as hell not a bad comic. Okay, then. If you've been here for the long haul, then you may recall all the way back in the Superman at Earth's End review, where I opened it briefly, talking about I this I may book. not remember. I to need to watch your issues. To understand this story, we need to understand the context of superhero comics at the dawn of the new millennium. Yeah. Moral compasses of society change over time. What is considered okay or appropriate, or even good or bad, has changed. Yeah, nowadays fans want darker, grittier superheroes. They don't like the they don't some fans don't like heroes who stand for truth and justice and do the right thing. They want heroes who kill people who are hardcore and edgy and very brutal. And that's not what makes them superheroes. It's kind of it's kind of dumb. It's kind of dumb to see your favorite superhero kill people and they want and you want them to keep killing but that just ruins what makes them a hero. It just goes against what they stood for. So yeah, is it, is what we see nowadays in Zack Snyder's films Popular and other opinions dark about what superheroes. Is right and just and decent will evolve. In turn, our media reflects those changes, and thus paragons of what is good must, in turn, reevaluate their ethics and determine whether they need to change. Superheroes thus have evolved over time to reflect the ethos of the people making them, what pop culture says is good and right during their present. You can see it especially as the Bronze Age of comics emerged. Suddenly, superheroes faced problems that can't be punched or put in jail. From the Bronze Age into the Dark Age, true. you have reevaluations of what it means to be a superhero. Hero, how to actually help the world. You can right. create a direct line from Squadron Supreme's 1985 maxi series, wherein the titular heroes try to turn the Earth into a utopia, directly to a 1999 book called The Authority. In between, you have the time of heroes getting darker and more violent to respond to a darker and more violent world, as conceived by writers who were no longer restrained by an idealism of a. We have seen something like this called Superman Kingdom Come. 
It's it, that got dark. Super, people did not want Superman to follow what truth and justice because they don't like his ways. They wanted these young heroes who can kill supervillains because they like to be violent and darker and edgy. Superman retired, but when the young heroes who are who went to kill their villain, kill the villains, they screwed up. Superman stepped in, and it got darker. And he's a bit. And Superman, man, this Superman managed to push even further, and. It didn't. It did not end well. Let's just say it did not end well in Kingdom Come. A lot of people died, and Superman had to suffer through that. Seeing people die, it got dark. And yet he still. And yet he still fights for what is right. He has that black emblem on his chest of the Superman symbol, saying, "Even in the darkest of times, he will still hold on to hope." And that's what makes him Superman. Ages Heroes could use guns, could kill, could grit their teeth and never smile. In many cases, indistinct from the villains they were fighting. And right. sure, many lamented it even at the time, but the changes were always going to occur eventually. To quote Mr. Spock, change is the essential process of all existence. That Super is true. Superheroes and their ethics were always going to change, because they had to if they wanted to stay relevant and interesting. And that brings us back to the authority. The Authority was a Wildstorm book originally written by Warren Ellis that spun out of Stormwatch, that book I reviewed the Zeroth issue of a few years ago, as well as its later integration into the DC Universe post-New 52, a secret United Nations force of superheroes designed to keep watch over the Earth. They were disbanded just prior to the Authority for a few reasons that aren't really relevant, although that does include the fact that they fought the Xenomorphs from Alien, some of them died, and that story is considered canon. The premise oh, was yeah, that, that several former members of Stormwatch and other heroes banded together in a powerful alien spacecraft to basically say, screw it, we don't need the backing of the United Nations, we're gonna protect the Earth no matter what it takes without answering to any other authority. We're in doing things our issues, way, basically. In Ellis's run, the book was pretty good. There was still a bit of edgelordness at times, but the characters had very real moments of humanity. Some of the things they did to stop threats were a bit morally questionable, but ultimately, they were always trying to save lives and dealt with very science fiction-y kind of threats. Its downside, really, was that each storyline was only four issues long, and thus there were a lot of ideas that could have expanded the story more, but ended up just being footnotes in them as a result. But that's right. not terrible. Really, when I was reading this stuff in anticipation of this review, the thought that occurred to me was, wow, this is clearly what Mark Miller wanted to do with the Ultimates, but sucked at. I forgot how bad the ultimate was. Ultimate comic book, the ultimate universe of the of the D of the Marvel comics. It has some good ideas, but executed very poorly, and they're not as smart as their main Marvel counterparts. I read Richards in the Ultimate Universe was turned into a villain known as the Maker, and uh, yeah, Captain America in the Ultimate Universe was more of a douchebag than his main counterpart. And yeah, the Hulk, the Hulk in the Ultimate Universe. Let's just say he was a monstrous cannibalism. Yeah, he the Hulk eats people. And fun fact, the Hulk in the Ultimate Universe is responsible for Peter's de Peter's parents, for Peter Parker's mom and dad's deaths. So yeah, didn't know about that, did you? So anyway, Mark Miller took over the book after Warren Ellis left. Reading those first 12 issues, I was a bit confused about why What's So Funny About Truth, Justice, and the American Way was a direct response to it. And then I read some of Mark Miller's run, and it all clicked into place. Ah, this is what it's an answer to. Suddenly, the team of very professional, imaginative, and interesting characters who didn't want to kill, but believed that sometimes it's necessary to stop a threat, became a bunch of smug jackasses who constantly swear, talk crudely, and happily discuss how they're gonna murder their opponents, and then openly do so by flying at super speed through someone's head or the like. They slaughter Water, admittedly, wow. totalitarian governments with no brutal. plan in place to rebuild nations other than take on refugees in their massive spaceship. They fight a thinly veiled pastiche of Marvel heroes who are only worse than them because they're also extremely bigoted and happy to murder innocent people in the process. Hell, their boss seems to be like a disgusting parody of Jack Kirby for no reason other than, oh, look at how edgy I am. Wow, that's, that's how those comics were back then.
And they have evil versions of ripoffs of the of the Marvel characters. Which, come to think of it, is pretty much Mark Miller's entire wheelhouse. So I don't know why I'm surprised. Who'd have yeah. thought Trouble was actually one of his less awful works? Inexplicably, yeah. this stuff was popular. It wasn't topping sales charts, but the readership was growing over time, which is an uncommon thing these days outside of temporary sales gimmicks like Cross. Nowadays, people want a Superman that is that kills people. People want Superman to kill people, kill his villains. They don't want him to be a goody two shoes. They don't want him to do the right thing. They want Superman to be. Fan, I see why fans love an evil Superman. I see why they love Homelander. Why they love Omni Man from Invincible. Why they love darker versions of Superman. They want the real Superman to be a murderer and kill people. They don't want Superman to do the right thing. Not realizing they don't understand the character. Probably because they can't relate to Superman saying Superman's not relatable. He's overpowered. If you re saying that Sup Clark Kent is the disguise, but Superman is his real identity. If you can switch that motive, it's Clark Kent is the true identity. Superman is the disguise. Clark Kent would like nothing more but than a normal life. It's what Clark Kent wants. A normal life. He becomes Superman just to help people. A chance to use his powers. The only time he gets to actually use his powers. Superman is a, is a, is a Kryptonian who wants to live on Earth and live a peaceful life. But as a superhero, he, and is not, and he always asks people, acts, willing to ask people for, ask people for what they want, and he's willing to help them out. He gets to know people. He asks for their names. And he's very friendly. He's a very chilled superhero. He's not a god. He's not treated as a god. He's not. People see think he's a god, but Superman doesn't see himself as a god. He just does the right thing because he was raised by good people, the Kent family. The Superman, Superman has basically becomes a good person because of the Kent family. If it weren't for for Martha Kent and Jonathan Kent, Super, Superman wouldn't be who he is. If he was raised by different people, yeah, you would have a a darker Superman. If he was raised in Russia, you got Superman Red Star. If he was raised, if he would crash land in the middle of a city, he would, you have Flashpoint Superman, where there the government experiments on Clark and use him as a weapon, draining his powers. It's a very dark series. Or you'll have basically Superman gods and monsters, different origins and different styles. You have Ultraman, who is an evil version of Superman that fans seems to want because they want Superman to be evil and want Batman to be the main hero because the fans really want Batman to beat to kill Superman because Batman has to be this overpowered god like hero because he's Batman. That's a dumb excuse. That is a dumb excuse for Batman always winning because he's Batman. He saying that if you give him enough time, make enough contingency, he can beat anyone. Yeah, but that's not always the case. It's not always the case why fans like these dark heroes. They want heroes to kill people. It's why is it always killing? It's, it, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But I guess that's how people think in their in their twisted head of theirs. But that's how it is. All right, anywho, back to uh, a top the fourth wall. Crossovers and variant covers. The sales orders between the Authority and Action Comics were comparable to each other. Not great, but consistent, and okay. indeed growing at times, with the Authority even overtaking the premier book of Superman. And thus, with that popularity and people showing support and love for a group that basically said, we'll do what we want with our power, just be grateful we're somewhat nice and think racism and homophobia are bad. Yeah, like I said before, they don't see Superman as the person. They only see him as the powers. And that's the problem with people nowadays. They don't see how 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 nice of and relatable of Superman is. They just how relatable Clark Kent is. They only see him as the powers, not the person. Except when we do it. The question reared its ugly head. Are traditional superheroics pointless? 
naive? Should Superman and heroes like him be willing to kill people with their power to match the supposedly far more successful and effectively brutal tactics of groups like the Authority? And please, no pedantics about, well, Superman did kill this one time in this canon story or anything like that. Aside from circumstances being contrived to do such a thing, it doesn't mean And yet people bring up General Zod from the Man of Steel. What I hate about fans nowadays... They treat Zack Snyder's version as the real Superman. That's how most of you fans out there, doesn't matter, all of you out there, y'all see Superman as Zack Snyder from Man of Steel and Zack Snyder's Justice League and Batman v Superman. Y'all see that as the real Superman. And Zack Snyder version of Superman, he hates the goody two-shoes, truth and justice version of Superman. He wanted a darker, grittier Superman who kills General Zod Despite that version of Superman had no experience of being a superhero and doesn't even feel like saving people at all. We do see him save people in Batman versus Batman v Batman v Superman, but he doesn't feel like he like he's interested in saving people. He looks so depressed. The story is good, or if they even still considered it canon by that point. And more importantly, you know what we're really talking about. Should Superman just put his fist through Lex Luthor's face to end him? That sort of thing. Because that's what the Authority did. That is what is at the heart of the story. A complete and fundamental shift in the morality of mainstream superheroes. And don't think it hasn't happened before. Even Captain America, the dude who punched Hitler, at one point in time thought killing was always wrong, absolutely. The moralities of our heroes can that shift true. with a change in popular opinion. So, why not Superman? In 2001, writer Joe Kelly had an answer, the comic we're going to review today. Most of you are probably more familiar with the story thanks to its animated adaptation, Superman vs. the Elite, and it is I a love very that faithful adaptation, owing mostly to Joe Kelly being the writer of said adaptation as well. Superman and the Elite is a good movie, and a good example why Superman doesn't go that far, why, fa why Superman doesn't do what you want him to do. Superman, this this movie, Superman and the, versus the Elite, explains why Superman does what he does and not give in to the darker tones of killing people. Oh, little, little details, details were changed. A battle on Io became a battle on Earth's moon sort of thing. Backstories and the like were expanded for the sake of movie length. It's definitely one of the better DC straight-to-video animated movies, but we're concerned with just the comic that spawned it. So let's dig into action comics. were changed, a battle on Io became a battle on Earth's moon sort of thing, backstories and the like were expanded for the sake of movie uh, length. Fix it's this definitely up a bit. one of the better DC straight-to-video animated movies, but we're Have concerned with just Due to a the glitch comic and buffering kind of messed so up. let's dig into Action Comics number 775. This is why it froze up on. What's so funny about truth, justice, and the American way? Oh, we're in the intro. This is, this is the intro. Okay. This is a long talk. This is a very big video. I'm sorry, guys. You're getting yourself. You're getting what you want. It's a nice jingle. I forgot how how good this jingle is. It can be your turn. Yeah. Lin Cara. That's a nice hat. I must say. I don't know where he gets a magic gun from. This comic sucks. Kara. I top the fourth wall. Okay. The cover is bad. Yeah, sorry, for such a critically yeah. acclaimed book, highly celebrated and beloved, this is just an awful cover. It's Superman kneeling, or 
standing? I thought he was kneeling, but actually looks more like he's trying his best to do all the <laughs> here. Amidst some wreckage. His eyes are glowing red. The area seems to be devastated. Honestly, it looks like he did it himself. Especially Pretty with much. red eyes. Also, his cape has cracks in it. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Those aren't folds. It's like it was a solid piece and it was fragmenting. Maybe it's supposed to be dirt, but it doesn't look like it, and none of the rest of him is like, like that. this. I mean, you combine this image with the title What's So Funny About Truth, Justice, and the American Way, and it looks like Superman is being immensely serious about it. You think there's something funny about those? Well, so did this building <laughs> behind me! He opened on Superman flying over the Earth on his way to Libya, like where a terrorist that. attack has taken place. It only takes him about four minutes to fly from Metropolis to Tripoli, but right before he gets there, the terrorist threat has ended. Admittedly, this is the DC Universe and before 9-11, so terrorist attack in this case equals giant cyborg gorilla. It was also holding a so. giant gun, which just seems like overkill at that point. But yeah, that thing's dead. Why a giant gorilla hold a giant robotic gorilla holding a giant gun as big as the city? This is the DC Universe at its weirdness over the top. Holy cow. It is hell. And probably several this was not thousand in the other movie. people, too, by the looks of it. We cut to the Daily Planet, where or Jimmy, Jimmy Olsen, Olsen is loudly complaining about another newspaper's scoop on the story. How, how the gorilla, gorilla was brought down by four people Jonah known Jameson? as the Elite. Perry White is equally unimpressed. The Elite saves Tripoli. I'm sure the families of 2,000 soldiers feel saved. I mean, not to side with the Elite, but they did technically save it. The headline is not inaccurate. Not True. even particularly inflammatory or misleading. Days what? like this, I really, really wish I knew more swear words. Doesn't matter, Jimmy, the comic would still censor them. Giant bloody hole in a gorilla, though. That's perfectly fine to show. Pretty Clark much, Kent yeah. is reporting on Why the scene not? and communicating with the planet from there. Manchester Black, I mean, they censor the curse words a lot. Of the group, told the Libyan but you didn't know Scourge the, the Hedgehog are dead. say curse Trust words me, in the Archie comics, year, and they censored that. love me for this. They forgot to mention he followed that up oh, by I'm sorry, Ken Penders, you, you own the rights to Scourge. Using only his mind. New headline, the he elite him. saves general from athlete's foot. The reporter who wrote up those details, Jack Ryder, a.k.a. the anti-hero The Creeper, enters and defends his story. Okay. And unfortunately, I have to give a bit of a critique of the book. I'm not really a big fan of Doug Monkey's art as it is. He's another artist where everyone looks like they're scowling, even when they're smiling. But he really dropped the ball on this page. Clark Kent and Jack Ryder are drawn almost exactly the same. Like, Ryder has a different suit. It kind of looks similar. Hair, but just glancing at the page, I keep thinking it's just Clark Kent has taken off his trench coat. Then you put them side by side, like in these panels, and it's really evident. Speaking of these panels, Clark wants to know how he could portray such obvious murderers as heroes. Ryder says the military were about to do a lot more damage trying to fight the gorilla, and the elite stopped it. Although I'm pretty sure he says it with a bit of racism in there too, because suddenly Jack Ryder is that much of a dick. The situation could have been contained without pretty a much. single life lost. Superman could have... Superman? That would have been great. Enough monkey business, guys! I'm taking you and your terrorist chums downtown for a spanking! And three months wow. later, it would happen all over again. You'll notice, however, that that response did not actually address the point that pretty much yeah they 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 think they think superman can't do the right they think superman could will do it peacefully and zach Z zach Ryder, i like the portrayal of zach Ryder from the batman animated series because in the comics he's a jerk that last lives, lives would have been lost he just complained because he saw superman as corny or naive image is more important the world is That's sick how fans and broken, are these days. Kent. People want someone to fix it, not hand out slogans and bandages. I mean, I think the injured people might want some bandages at least. We yeah. cut over to the White House. Why not? This was What's during the time bandages? when Lex Luthor was president. God, I miss the days when that seemed unbelievable. And Lex is being informed yeah, that Lex there is Luthor's a considerable president. percentage of people who approve Remember of those the days factions, in the DC Universe? More, the power levels that even one member of their team, Cold that Cast, is piece of crap. could potentially rival Superman. The one called Cold Cast blinked his eyes and shorted 15 satellites from 300 miles out. TV reception is regularly a problem when Cold Cast isn't sleeping. The instant the elites look crosswise at American citizens, we will turn them into cat food. British citizens, though, hamster chow. Until then, really? these people tend to mix with their own. 
Meta fighting Metas for bragging rights. Dude, I just sliced off the legs of a Libyan general and killed a giant gorilla. Beat that! Release some uh, statements condemning violence in all of its horrible forms. And meanwhile, we wait and see who's standing when the smoke clears. I'm the government. I'm the government. Pretty much. I'm the real. That's pretty I'm much the, the pretty much what it is. The elite release a manifesto onto every computer on Earth. They're Basically the good Donald guys, Trump. namely us, and they are the bad guys. Yeah, good guys are regularly known for having. Can we? I guess Donald Trump is the closest thing to Lex Luthor. Oh, shots fired! Come at me. Manifestos. We do not believe in nations. We do not believe in treaties Come at me. or you boundaries know I'm right. or classes or politics. We do believe in a thing called love, but only when Nobody we listen likes to the them. rhythm of our hearts. Hey, celebrities Basically, don't it like says them. if you treat people like trash to further your own petty aims, celebrities don't like them as president. Like atom bomb. They're downloading data via post-dimensional probability runnel. Using multimodal reflection sorting. Superman starts using his own Kryptonian computer systems to try to track them, but his fingers hey, move steel. so fast that the keyboards start overheating. Heating and smoking. He's talking You're about the this Flash, with Steel, Superman. who notes that the elite seem to have gotten under his skin. Superman decides to wash off his skin with, like, lava? I don't know, maybe it's like mellow yellow or something. Point is, Superman does wonder is. for a moment if the world has moved I've on. I've never seen that in that. the movie. Before they can really talk about it, there's an alert from Japan. Superman flies off as we see some news broadcasts where there's a ton of support for the elite's activities. The elite are here to stay. Who's strong enough to say otherwise? Okay, at the moment, nobody even knows what the elite look like, and they've nope. only done like one activity. Maybe it's time for people to cool their heels on how super mega awesome they're supposed to to be i mean yeah they took down a giant cyborg gorilla but i can think of like five guys on the justice league who could do that too anyway too. superman is intercepted by a group of japanese supervillains and is knocked back before he can get his bearings again the elite arrive and quickly slaughter the villains he's having trouble recovering from whatever hit him but eventually gets back up the elite showing themselves these are the four of them Manchester Black is the dude in the Union Jack shirt. He's a powerful telekinetic. The guy behind him in chains is Coldcast, who can there manipulate electromagnetism. I don't know why he's wearing all the chains, only that I think it might have been an iffy decision to make the black dude's outfit just a bunch of chains. The blue-haired dude yeah, is the hat. I have a magic questions user about who can that. Conjure up stuff from his magical hat. And finally, Menagerie. Her outfit is made up of creatures called Sim Beasts. Basically weird alien creatures that are kind of like, say, Marvel symbiotes, but there are many of them all in one, and more bizarre in appearance. The Sim Beasts can be used yeah, for various did tasks it better. and form into various objects, Venom did it better. including wings for her to fly. What's interesting never is that while this is meant to be a critique of the authority, they're not really a pastiche of them in the traditional sense. Right. Unlike Mark Miller's hugely unimaginative parodies of Marvel characters in his run, it's more about the attitude of the team than a one-to-one -one copy. There are references you could probably make. Menagerie being a flyer with wings is kind of similar to the authority Swift. Manchester right. Black wears a Union Jack t-shirt like Jenny Sparks did during the Warren Ellis run, but that's pretty much it. Anyway, they bring Superman back to their base of operations, where- You know, they introduced Manchester Black in the CW Supergirl, except they made him a literal black man with purple hair. I don't know. I don't, they made him a neutral character in Supergirl. And then we never see him again. Apparently. We never see this guy, character again. Coldcast <laughs> explains that he's the one who took out Superman by accident. A high-frequency neutrino wash. He was using it to try to bring the villains down, but they were shielded. Manchester says that the villains were a group of genetically accelerated metahumans working for an isolationist faction of the government, planning on destroying Tokyo in another few seconds. Superman, however, objects to their need to kill the metas to stop them. That, or watch a live rerun of Hiroshima, only with blokes who can turn your guts inside out with their eyes. Don't even get me stopped and what they could have done with their elbows. Superman <laughs> scoffs at their attitude wow. and ends justify the means kind wow. of thing. Black tries to be diplomatic yeah, Superman does not like these guys. That their base is actually a bacteria colony from another dimension, a living spacecraft that they stole and brought back here, which they've nicknamed Bunny. This one is definitely more of a direct reference to the Authority, which also had a living spaceship, but their relationship with it was more benign, at least in the Warren Ellis issues. Never really saw them do much with it during the Mark Miller ones I read. Anyway, right. yeah, Superman just says he doesn't care if they're terrorists or armed rebels or anything like that. They are murdering people and calling themselves heroes, and he wants them to stop. 
Black thinks he's just jealous. You may not believe this, but as a kid, I used to love heroes. Though I never used the word for us. Instead, I used a word that made us sound like snobs. Pretty much. That's what good guys do, right? Good not, pounding not really. snot out of evil and bright tights. No questions. No gray areas. It was a perfect bloody dream for a boy who lost a mother to lung cancer and a father to Adolf. And then I woke up. Turns out I had wet the bed. Because I don't follow your systems, man. Wow. Masks are for hiding. Capes are for play. Tights actually do wonders for my bum, so I have to keep wearing those. <laughs> Villains don't I mean, they do look good on you. They smoke you. I mean, if you if you got the body for it, wear the, the tights. Pulpit or in front of the classroom. This is the DC I'm sure universe. the ladies will they love it. They most assuredly still do that. I mean, have you met Dr. Savannah? Yeah. Reality is a might bloodier than sitcoms or comics. The greys stretch out farther. Okay, this one might be a direct reference to The Authority, wherein the Hulk parody directly said comic books are... Well, there you are. And if you want to disregard what they say because, hey, it's a villain saying it, well, the leader of the authority also tells the president, we're not like comic book heroes. It astounds me when I see writers in comics insulting comic books. It always comes off as so try-hard and immature. I'm not like those comics. Take me seriously. I'm an adult. <laughs> anyway, Superman says that he recognizes the dark wow. elements of the world, but that I think they this can't is throw morality de I think Deadpool can make fun of that. Time. Times. Black counters that peace he does it a lot. and hasn't encountered real difficult times. That survival sometimes means doing morally questionable things. They're human beings with the power to make a difference, and they're doing it their way. And they love us for it. I like that that is especially brought up, because I think it really highlights another critique of the authority, wherein they really embrace their celebrity status and use it for drugs, sex, and money. They can say it's about the greater good as much as they like, but it often comes across like they do care more about how they look than doing the right thing. Black says Superman Yeah, that is that is true nowadays, sadly. They they there are certain types of heroes who kill the bad guys and saying they doing it for the greater good, but they only doing it for themselves for popularity and fame just to make themselves look good. Cuz sometimes some heroes can be complete douchebags. Complete com and I mean complete douchebags towards you. The, your friends, your family, the kids, and you, and you probably would praise them just because they they kill the bad guys. But what if they start killing innocent people who didn't do anything wrong? Then it's a different story. And can handle the traditional bad guys, but everyone else is going to be dealt with their way. Now be a good little dream and say, I understand, Mr. Black. Of course, of course. Up yours, dick nose. There we oh, go. I'm sorry, I Perfect said that response. Uh, <clears throat> Cram it, puss lips. Yeah, I think I got it that time. Yeah, Superman that, that says he'll stop them, but they just teleport him down to Earth. Clark meets with his father and discusses all this, especially how people are more and more embracing the elite's point of view. Some folks, mostly loud and angry ones, others just scared. They look outside and see revolving doors on prisons, government corruption, maniacs hiding in the desert, Children? Yes, children truly are the worst among all the things you listed. Well, what happens to children these days gets anyone's blood up. Damn kids in their fortnights. Sometimes. Yeah, kids nowadays, they um, they see something thinking that it's cool. It, it might take it a negative way. They, they don't. The kids don't understand. It's, it's our job to guide children to the right path. So making sure they don't follow that dark path of doing something wrong. Because... Children are the future of, of our generation, and we don't want to leave the future into a dark... We don't want to live in a dark future in their hands, and th where they don't know what to do. We have to guide them. And the truth, truth justice, justice in the American way just doesn't make them feel better. They want easy answers, quick results. Damn it, Dad! It's almost as if nobody even listens to me when I say their problems are over there, and that over there needs to take care of it themselves! Clark asks if they're right, but of course, Pa Kent says it isn't. But that you can't just talk someone down from that position. You need to lead by example. Clark thinks he's right, Pa Kent even saying that, hey, you can always just defeat them in battle if the lesson doesn't work. 
but Clark seems to indicate that he's not sure if he can actually win. After a quick montage of Superman right. observing people debating the Elite, including some kids play-acting a fight between him and the Elite, we get into something that was definitively not in the animated adaptation. A parody of the men in black who are attacking a city. It's only for like two I pages. I did not know this was a thing. It's weird that that reference is in there. Anyway, Superman uses his knowledge of not the aliens with them, who think water is a poison, to get them to surrender without a single person killed. He, of course, knows the elite are watching, and they show up. He says now he'll get the JLA to detain the aliens and then question the rogue DEO agents to find out who they are and what they want. But Black says he already knows who they are. Mostly thanks to these same guys being responsible for Menagerie's, well, Menagerie. Black says that these people are bad and that their trial will be a sham, just resulting in them training more people to be assholes. Then right. I'll stop them again and again and again if I have to until they get the message. And I'll do it without melting anyone into slag for kicks. Superman! Not melting anyone into slag for kicks. <laughs> Damn, you Americans like to hear yourselves yap. Okay, dude, you just gave us a whole friggin' monologue about who the aliens are and why you should be allowed to murder them after they've already been stopped. Don't claim Superman is the one who talks too much. Anyway, he tells yes. the hat to kill Did them all and then the kettle rain black. acid on their families to send a message. Remember, we're the good guys. Superman wow. punches the hat before he can do that, the hit getting seen by floating cameras that the Elite brought with them, transmitting that to the world. Thanks for the just cause, mate. If you're not part of the solution, etc, etc, tomorrow. And they teleport away. So, yeah. like, noonish? I just want to know if I have time to get lunch first. Actually, as Clark lays in bed with Lois, he says he's going to have the fight at dawn. Lois asks, as his wife, why he needs to do this and not bring in the JLA to help. The Elite didn't take the fight to the JLA or the New Gods or someone. They wanted me. No, you went to them. No, they threatened innocent people with acid and wanted to murder people already in custody. That Just is true. Clark has been eager to take them down doesn't mean he started this conflict. Lois what? is genuinely concerned that the elite can beat him. He tells Lois about something he overheard during his excursion in the city. Kids playing as Superman and the elite. I heard a child tell his friend that he wanted to be in the elite because it would be fun to kill bad guys. Fun to kill. Okay, yes. but to be fair, Clark, have you played Doom Eternal? Because hot damn. <laughs> I mean, it is a it is a good video game. Doom Eternal is a really good game. Go check it out. But hey, you get to kill demons. Demons who hate humans. Who, demons who hate humanity. Demons who hate God, who hate angels. And you get to play as Doom Guy and make sure those demons don't hurt anyone. People, People have, have to, to know, know that there's another way, Lois. They have to hear a voice of compassion and faith instead of spite and anger. They have to see that someone believes in humanity strongly enough to die for them. Okay, Lois, let's be real here. Dying in the DC universe is like taking a long weekend. You're back by Pretty Tuesday. Much. He leaves a note for her and Death heads out means at nothing dawn, in comic calling books. on the elite to finally end Unless it. it's Time injustice. Time to wake up, little man. Unless it's injustice. The dream is over. Well, good. I was tired of going to work naked every day. They want to throw down <laughs> right away, like even calling out body parts they want to take, but Superman asks them to not do it in the middle of a city. Black agrees, and they teleport to Jupiter's moon Io, with a little reference to 2001 A Space Odyssey thrown in, because why not? Let's why not, not dwell on that. Superman makes one last appeal to them, that there's another path besides the violence they've chosen. This fight is being transmitted to the entire world, and I can't help but wonder if this message is meant for humanity as well, not just the elite. Anyway, Black, of course, refuses, and Superman gets tossed around. Rule number one, he who has the power makes the rules. Rule number two, no parking on Sundays. No one hits of one of my people and walks. Well, that's easy, considering you just sent him flying. This isn't about love. It's about removing the cancers that fester in us and flushing them down the toilet. The people don't want babysitters and spandex to slap them on the wrist when they're bad. They want surgeons to cut the ugly bits from them and charge them through the moral nose. Dr. Right. Manchester Black at your service. Okay, now we're getting into the real nitty gritty of this whole thing. 
For okay. additional points that I'm going to try not to repeat, check out SF Debris' review of Superman vs. the Elite. A lot of good stuff there that can be echoed here. I'll check As it I out. As I brought up in the Superman I will check those review, out. Superman is not a god. He's just a guy trying to do good wherever he can. Unilaterally declaring yourself to answer to no one, to make choices that will affect billions of people without even asking anybody first, does not make you someone in service of humanity. But and that's the message I'm trying to get people to understand why Superman is not as overpowered as you think he is. He's just a guy who does the right thing. He inspires people to do the right thing. He inspires us that we can be better and we can be better. And there's nothing wrong with helping those to show compassion, to show mercy, to show that you can be you can do the right thing and not be criticized by it because it makes you feel better as a person. And Superman inspires that. It was he was raised by it by his family, and Superman people treat Superman as a god because because of his powers. If you stop focusing on his powers, focus on his personality. That's what's important, not what makes Superman who he is as a person. Not because he has super strength, heat vision, and x-ray vision, and can fly and breathe in space and all these godlike superpowers. It's, it's him as a person. But rather placing yourself above them. And while Black is saying that people don't want babysitters in spandex, he made it clear with his first sentence that he does not care what people want. He who has the power makes the rules, he said. Might makes right. But to paraphrase my favorite movie, Pretty much. if superheroes are modern day knight errants, then the code they should be following is might for right. Those right. who have power should use it only for that which is moral. No one hits one of you my have people the responsibility and walks, to use those powers. He said. Not Basically, just for yourself, but the people around charge. you. Defy us and you will die. What the elite and the authority promise is not a better world. It's just a world living in constant fear. Ordinary people have to be afraid of escalation. They have that to be afraid true. of these super powerful beings suddenly, suddenly deciding, decide. you know what? You guys never, never vote, vote for your own self-interest, so you don't get to vote anymore. They have to be afraid of being collateral damage because beings like them don't actually care about them. That's they claim true. to, but the truth is they just like flexing their might. They're Pretty hammers, much. and every problem looks like a nail. People have to be afraid that one day their masters will grow bored of them and wipe them out. After all, That's the terrifying they already part. don't care about anything. Not lives, not treaties, not government. That, that is true. There are superhero, super, There are some characters who don't care about you. They, are, they see themselves as whoever has the most power is the strongest. And they can do whatever they want. This is why the boy is known as Home Homelander. He's a perfect example of a of a t evil version of Superman. Just because he has the power, he can do whatever he wants. Because in his mindset, he sees himself as the strongest. That no one can match him. No one can kill him. No one can beat him in his universe. And keep in mind, there are other characters in other dimensions who are stronger than Homelander. But Homelander doesn't know that. Omni-Man is another example. He sees him as the strongest because he and his race are the strongest because if you're weak, you die. If you're not strong enough, you're going to die. He sees humanity as useless unless they work under him if they surrender to them. And Invincible does not want... Invincible, his son Mark Grayson, does not want that to happen. He, he, he was raised on Earth and he doesn't want his people to die. And... Seeing Mark Grayson trying to save that family in, in the episode 8, spoilers, yeah, he fails. He tries, but fails because Omni-Man is just that powerful. He, Omni-Man would just kill a person easily. It's very brutal. And Superman, and a character like Superman, who is holding back so much so he doesn't want to hurt innocent people because Earth is his home. It's his new home. He is raised there. He doesn't want nothing happening to his home. And and fans saying that I'm wrong because of you're thinking about Zack Snyder's Man of Steel. Zack Snyder doesn't know crap of what Superman is. He doesn't know what Superman stood for. He just sees Superman as the character with all the godlike powers and does collateral damage. It just overpowersly kills his enemies. 
that's what fans wanted Zack fans compare Zack Snyder's Superman to so many other versions of superheroes and yet fans fail and I mean fail to go back to the original source of what makes Superman Superman to me the Superman I know that I grew up with was the animated series the one with the Batman anime series voiced by Tim Daly that was my first version of Superman to me, that was my true prime example of what Superman is. And I see different versions. Some of them has captured his character. Some of them have not. And Christopher Reeves, the live action Superman who passed away a long time ago, he was the best live action Superman. He was better than Henry Cavill because he stood in his own ways. Superman stood for truth and justice in the American way. But to him, Superman is basically a friend. A friend in need, a friend who looks after, who looks out, who looks out for you, who helps you out, who is always willing to hang out with. That is what Superman is to Christopher Reeves and Brendan Ruff. Who Brendan Ruff? I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. He played Superman in Superman Returns, and even though that movie didn't do so well, he captured a character, but he captures some well some small parts of the character i don't know what the writers were thinking they were trying to make an, a continuation and but he captured it perfectly in the cw crisis of infinite earths and tyler who is playing superman in superman and lois he captures the character perfectly i love tyler in the, the, the tyler guy he plays superman in superman and lois that is who, he I'm a father figure who is taking care of two boys while also being Superman, but also being a father and being Clark Kent. We get to see him as hum as a human and people testing him saying, saying that he's this godlike being. He shouldn't, he should not worry about the innocent, worry about innocent people. He's Superman. He's the overpowered hero. Clark Kent doesn't see himself as the overpowered God. He sees him as a hero who does the right thing and always do the right thing and inspires others to do what's right and also wants to live a normal life and that's why i love superman that's why i like superman as a hero he's the, without super he is the first superhero created for a reason we wouldn't have superheroes like spider-man batman captain america or wonder woman or any other superheroes without superman because he's literally the backbone of the dc universe that's and that's why we need characters like Superman to be an example of that it's not there's nothing wrong of doing the right thing. You do all you, doing the right thing is what makes you a better person. Help those in need. I'm sorry, I got a little wisdom in there, but this is a very long video. For a minute, it's not morality. So why would they care about the people they're supposed to protect? And let it not be said that I'm not fair. Even Mark Miller's book asked, hey, shouldn't we be concerned about that guy with godlike powers also being a heroin addict? I'm kind of iffy about him being a part of the good guys if this keeps up. Reality is right. pain, bile, and darkness. Reality rules. More on this in a bit. Anyway, yeah, the elite wail on Superman. Dropping stuff on him, blood vessels bursting thanks to telekinesis, and finally, cold cast unleashing a massive energy field that blows Superman away, leaving only part of his cape. However, even as the hat is pulling out champagne, Superman speaks to them. I finally get it now. Thank you. I've been trying to understand that dog meme for years now. This is where it gets real. Get it. I've made the <laughs> mistake of treating you people like people. You will now be treated like gophers. <laughs> Something hits Menagerie and her body goes wild. The Simbeast's basically not keeping calm and she collapses. And this the is where says Superman she's not breathing begins. And Manchester wants Coldcast to blanket the area and his electromagnetic powers. But the blast that supposedly killed Superman has worn him out. Superman creates a massive sandstorm around them. Black protects Coldcast with a telekinetic field, but the hat is out in the open. Normally his magic would protect him from any physical damage, but the wind speeds create a vacuum that sucks away all the air, collapsing his lungs. Superman then sends Coldcast away. He took a trip into space at Mach 7. If you had super hearing, you'd hear a pop. 
pop in 10 seconds. That'll be the bubble wrap I put him in. <laughs> Points to Monkey's arm in this next page. This is an ugly Superman, and it's supposed to be ugly. It's supposed to look harsh and unattractive and everything you don't want to see out of the Man of Steel. And that is true. And the torn is a nice touch. How does it feel? They captured that in the animated movie. You thought you had has been taken away from you. How does it feel to have your flaws exploited, to be deconstructed? There are like 70 billion what if Superman was a bad guy stories. Pretty so much. let's act them out, shall we? How does it feel to watch dreams die? And people want the people think the injustice Superman is is better because people want the people want Superman to become like his injustice counterpart. No. I don't want him. We never had a good Superman story in a long time because the old direct, the old president of DC Comics hates Superman and makes Batman the number one. Why do you think we got so many Batman merch? Because he treats Batman as a god. Batman is just a man in a bat suit who, with intelligence. I like Batman. He, he's one of my favorites. Batman the Animated Series is one of my favorite versions of Batman. But I wouldn't praise Batman as this godlike tier who knows all the answers. Not even Batman is always right. And it gets annoying that the Batman favoritism is annoying. Seeing Batman as the hero and treat Superman as the villain. It's easy to make Superman the bad guy and make, just to make Batman look good. It's very easy. And injustice is the reason that caused that. Injustice the dream series. of being a murderous douche canoe is gone forever. Black prepares to use his telekinesis to fight back, but Superman uses his heat vision, laser focused through Black's retinas, right into his brain. He says he used his x-ray vision to identify an unusual part of his brain, the source of his telekinesis, and cut it out, destroying his powers. He whacks Black yeah, around Superman for good can measure take away your powers. Cry, both terrified Just by finding and that piece. By this. His one recourse is to talk to the cameras that have been observing this and transmitting it to Earth proclaiming that Superman is no better than they were. Yes, they did see, didn't they? They saw all the ugliness, the anger, and I bet it frightened them. It frightened me when I decided to cross the line. Do what you do. I was terrified. Thought it would be tough. But you know what? Anger is easy. Hate is easy. Vengeance and spite are easy. As was indicated by Jack Ryder's words at the beginning of the comic, there is a misconception they that are. Superman is a big meathead who just delivers corny lines because that's the stereotype. Yeah, people treat Superman as an idiot. People, they only see him as the big buff guy who has no brains and intelligence. Superman is very smart. He can think a thousand times faster than a normal human. You, you treat him as an idiot just because Batman's the smart uh, is the smartest one in the team. Superman is very intelligent, and, and people forget that part. But superheroes. but superheroes have evolved. Their writing has gotten smarter. And consequently, Superman is not stupid. Yes. One of the greatest things about Superman is that he possesses all this power, all these abilities that any cynical person would say would corrupt and make him into a terrifying tyrant, but it didn't. He chose to use his powers for kindness, to be a good person, the kind of person who wouldn't murder everyone when he got angry, to always hold his power in check in a world full of cardboard to make sure that he never hurt innocent people. That is true. He got true. smarter because he needed to be smarter to ensure that he wouldn't take a life. It's not like he's never thought about doing these things. It's just he chose not to. He thought about it, he considered it, and he decided it was wrong. The elite have all that power and none of the wisdom. They're that is true. Thank you, Mankara. And fans say Superman could turn like that. And they use injustice as an example. If the Joker killed his Joker killed his wife Lois, Superman would easily turn. That version of injustice is different from the main counterparts because the injustice the the DC characters in the Injustice series are dumber than their main comic book counterparts. I mean watch the decisions watch um watch comic book store comic book storian comic book storian's review of 
Injustice series, the full book and the kill count. He said, I think there's a difference between the main DC comic books is that the Injustice counterparts are dumber than their main counterparts. And I have to agree, he's not wrong. And Injustice Superman failed. He let anger and anger and hatred corrupt him. And main Superman didn't. Cause he he probably saw example because main Superman saw examples of an evil Superman, and he will makes it more reason why he would never choose that path. Injustice Superman is an example why the real Superman would never follow that path. And Zack Snyder kind of used in did say in one of his old video reviews that he did use Injustice Superman as an example, making Batman be Superman. And in Justice League, the movie, Snyder Cut, which explains a lot why we got an evil Superman in his movies. Sloppy. And in his flashback. And they're cynical. A little imagination, and they could use the magnificently broad powers they have to accomplish the same things they claimed to be about without a single life lost. But no, they think the world is ugly and mean, and so they got ugly and mean in response. It's easy to look at the terrible things happening at any given Preach, point in history buddy. and see all the examples of greed, corruption, and evil. Preach. But it's also easy to overlook the compassion, the decency, to see people being nice and good and wonderful. That's, that's also one of the problems I hate about the world sometimes. People... There are most people out there. You focus on the negative and the and the ugliness of this world. You focus on the bad things that why things don't go well. And yeah, sometimes I think that way too, but sometimes we always forget about the positives, the good, the good things in life. That life is worth living. Life is not meaningless. And why I'm glad I am a Christian, that why God put me on this earth. God put me on this earth because earth is our gift from him. He made the earth for us and he wants us to live a good life no matter what. And don't focus on the bad. You always There will be some bad things in life that will tear you down. But always remember there are some good things that is worth fighting for. And... People seem to forget about that. People forget how important it is. And it's depressing. I, met, I had bad days before and it's, it, it, it tears me apart. It, it, it's, I, mean, I always wonder how I'm going to make it through this, how I'm going to overcome it. And, and I see why I see different writers marvel comics dc they capture those feelings as well and linkar is speaking truth here there are people out there like you who don't understand that life is worth it that they're why I'm, as a christian i believe there is a god who do loves you and his son gave his life for us so that we can live on this earth so that we can live on this earth and that's why I accept him as my savior, as a Christian, and I'm proud to be a Christian. And I don't force my religion on those who aren't religious. I don't force you. As a Christian, I do not force you to become a Christian. Instead, I welcome you in open arms. My family welcome you if you are ready. If you're ready to turn your life around, we'll wait. We'll welcome you. We'll welcome you in. We're not going to force you. That's your decision. You have free will, just like me. And always remember that life is going to put you down because it has, life has thrown, it, it hit some curveballs at me a million times. And it, probably you guys as well. But don't let, don't let that negative stuff corrupt you. Always think about the good, the people that you love, the people you care about, your friends, your family, they are worth it. They are worth living. It takes true courage to keep living. Dying is easy, and you can die any time, but that's a coward's way out. It takes real courage for any man, woman, and child to keep living on to, to the end. And you, you choose to live a good life. We all have one life to live. You choose how you live it. Like, I choose how I live it.
because I love being alive. I'm thankful every day for being alive. And there are some terrible people out there. But don't forget about the good people who are wants to make a difference too. That's all there that's what I'm saying. That's what Lenkara is saying. And most of these comic books, heck, even anime characters, anime, TV shows, cartoons, live actions, they have that lesson too. They may be fictional, but the lessons can be real. And I read and the Bible is also real. They teach you to be faithful. And, and but you don't believe in then you read it it helps it helps you out it... that's my deconstruction of superheroes people can be and are kind so why wouldn't someone with incredible abilities be kind too and anyway as superman's Superman a good example says, of that he doesn't like his heroes ugly and mean doesn't believe in it which is why he didn't kill the elite. They're all unconscious, and the Justice League have commandeered Bunny, who, of course, as a living being, they were able to communicate with, and it is more than happy to be free of them. Hell, he didn't even destroy Black's powers. He gave him the equivalent of a concussion, nullifying his powers temporarily until the authorities can come by and put on psychic dampeners to hold him back. Black is pissed. He is very saying smart. That Superman should have just killed them all. So long as a heart beats in my chest, I'll come after you, you punk! twit if you think this is over you're living in a bloody dream world you know what black i wouldn't have it any other way dreams save us dreams lift us up and transform us and on my soul i swear until my dream of a world, world where of dignity, dignity honor, honor and justice, justice becomes become a reality, reality we, we all share, share. I'll never stop fighting. I'll never stop fighting. Ever. Although, I suppose we could set up a superhero black ops team to deal with darker threats in the world with your sister leading them and put Cassandra Kane <laughs> on it. Oh, and Coldcast too. No hard feelings, dude! And so our comic ends with Superman flying off. Uh, you know you guys are still on IO, right? Might want to teleport back to Earth. Especially since you're not exactly looking in great shape, Clark. This comic is great, and yes, I think it is. you all know that by now. And the animated version is good. It does feel a little skimmed down in places, especially in terms of individual characterization and motivation for members of the elite, but it hits the important elements. Quiet moments of contemplating and debate from Superman. I see why you requested this, NP. I'm calling you NP now. About the elite's position, and it doesn't really have an easy answer for some of the stuff Black says, just that it's more important to stick to morality than to embrace the darker elements of our nature. After all, how can we make the world a better place? place to live the dream if we're not willing to try to live up to the better world. One could argue that it's more interested in trying to parody and deconstruct the authority that it detracts from the narrative, but yeah, I don't think so. As much. I said, Superman vs. the Elite served to expand the story in all the right ways, and it helps having the original writer on this board. This is probably the longest video I've, I've ever made. Comic ...and a few others slightly modified. Monkey's art ever might reacted not be to. my favorite, but he especially has a dirty quality to a lot of his art that's served well in some areas, like the ugly Superman or the Elite's much grimmer visages. And I especially like the ending lines, recontextualizing that old Superman motto, fighting a never-ending battle. It's not never-ending because it's a cause that will never be won, but because he'll never give up on his dream. This is not the first time Superman has been confronted by this kind of thinking, and it will not be the last. But this yeah. is definitely one of the best examples of Superman sticking to his principles and winning through on them. There are going to be a lot of supervillains who challenge Superman over and over and over in different TV shows, comics, cartoons... They will challenge Superman, and Superman will stick to his principles, and he will have to prove it every day. Superman has been tested every day. Beings who are stronger than him, yet Superman's not overpowered. He doesn't just kill the. He doesn't kill at all, and he doesn't just overpower the enemies. There are enemies who are stronger than him. Superman's not even a top. 20 or 30 of overpowered characters in DC Comics. And so I don't know what fans say that he's too overpowered are talking about. Next time, the build-up for the 600th episode begins. And as such, I need a bit more time to work on it. So let's have ourselves some more comic book quickies. Okay. Okay, that's it. That was Linkara, top the fourth wall. Yeah, I, I said a lot in this video. And, I, and all of it was from the heart. 
I hope you guys understand what I mean, why I like this character, why Superman is important, why life is important, why doing the right thing is important. And I hope you get it in that head of yours. Let me know in the comments down below, what were your thoughts on this video? Did you enjoy it? Thank you MP for, let, for letting me react to this. This was a really good comic book issue. And it's one of my favorite Superman stories. And one of the animated series that I enjoyed watching. And people don't understand the character of what why Superman is important. Why being a hero and doing the right thing is important. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to talk. Write your comments. Go ahead. I'm not afraid. Let me know what you need to what you need to let me know what you want what you what you need to say so I can read them. As always, take care, have a great day, be safe. Most importantly, stay frosty and stay healthy out there. Catch you all later and always remember to enjoy the good things in life. Don't focus on the bad, but focus on the good. Cause it cause sometimes the good the good things in life is what's worth living for. Take care, everyone. How does it feel to be the worst cop ever, huh? Shut up, your mother buys you Mega Blocks instead of Legos. You fucking take that back.